Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we are still in World Watercolor Month and I am going to do another video for you. Not only are we going to experiment with another featured color, but we're going to take a challenge to win something. So if you would like to win uh, some watercolor or maybe a great brush, some a gift from me, then definitely try this challenge and go and share it in our group page, which I will link in the video below in the description box on the Watercolor for Beginners group page and share what you paint with the hashtag Jack's Art Challenge. So hashtag Jack's Art Challenge and you will enter to win. I'm really excited too. And it, by the way, I will leave affiliate links for the materials in the box. If you can use the affiliate links, that's how we fund the giveaways. So the more affiliates that we get on board here, if you are shopping for watercolor, whether it be at Jackson's or at um, Amazon, then that is much appreciated because that's how we do more giveaways. And that is that so thank you so much for doing that okay so this is the painting that one of my watercolor students shared with me and asked me if i would show her how to paint this and i thought well you know what this is perfect timing because i was trying to think of what we're going to do this week so we're going to go ahead and do one of these and we're going to pick a really cool color so let's see my granulating watercolor uh, palette is growing ever so ever so smoothly you can see I have like no nothing left on this first rack but the best thing about this is it has a second rack available so and I'm already starting to fill that in um you know when I saw this picture I was thinking first about doing like green but I think since this one is in the grays it would be really cool to choose a color called gray rose mist and the reason why I like it is because in my granulating watercolor class, we did a really cool project on this exact color. And I loved the way it came out. I'm just grabbing this journal because this is the granulating watercolor class. Um, and we did all these, I always show them to you because they keep growing, but this was the gray rose mist. And that color is actually all of this it was just one color it's a beautiful granulating paint color that I thought would be perfect for this design with the tree and that kind of like misty kind of background look uh, so that's what I mean originally thought you know I tend to go blues tend to go greens but I think that this would be really perfect for that particular one. So let's go ahead and get our gray rose mist. So gray rose mist, and I'm gonna get a little clip because I still have not learned this palette entirely. So what I do, because I have the uh, color swatches here, so this is my key, I just find the color and literally put a little clip on it. And that's, the entire extent of the way that I find these things. <laughs> I also keep the tubes on hand and then I do have them down here as well. Um, but it's right there. So let's just put this aside. That's what this palette is for. And what else will I be needing? Well, for this design, I suggest that you, I like to use a flat brush because it makes that so quick and easy in like one sweep, right? Getting all the background in. Um, we could use a hard edge or plastic card to do our tree because they're very thin kind of lines. You could also pull a striper brush and this is one of my favorite by Escoda Versatile. I love this brush as you already know. Um, for the tree, there's a couple of ways to get at this tree. You could use the striper brush and literally, you know, go back and forth and I'll show you an easy way to do that. Or you could use a fan brush. So maybe I'll show you a couple of different ways to get at these trees or an angular shader. This one is by Princeton Aqua Elite and it's my favorite half inch shader. I really like this one. I can remove color with this and I can also paint with it. So 
great set. By the way, the Mottler brush that I'm gonna be using that I grab often is also Princeton Aqua Elite. And I believe I bought those in a set and I will find out and link it below for you. So that's the design we're gonna be painting. And I promise to make it easy. <laughs> I promise to make it easy for you. I have my accordion journal here that I made. It's got 100% watercolor paper on it and it's Fabriano. I'm not gonna bother to tape it because you don't really need to on this, um, on this quick exercise. It's just gonna be pretty quick and easy. So I'm just gonna clip it right there. We're gonna write the color like I always do so that we always remember. So this one is by uh, White Knights and it is gray. Rose Mist. And my name is Jacqueline Jacks. You can get links for all of my lessons at JacquelineJacks.com. Should you want to take lessons from me? And I'm really cool to take lessons from, by the way. <laughs> okay, so I have a clean water. I have a kind of dirty water. And I usually keep a very dirty water on hand. And the reason why is because I actually keep my water clean by having a dirty water thing. And then I just have a bunch of towels or rags that I just kind of repurpose. You can use paper towel. I don't recommend using toilet paper on anything watercolor because it does leave um, a residue. So just keep a towel there. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So, Mottler brush. This is the one and a half, and I'm just gonna wet this down. We're gonna give our watercolor just a little, a little tab here. And I don't have a palette here where you can see it. So, what we'll do is, let's give you some. Base. Can you see that? Good. So this is my watercolor. Gorgeous. Um, it looks like just this innocent little gray, like it's just not doing anything. So plenty of watercolor there. Taking my brush, I'm just going to find a nice light tone of it. And we actually are not going to kill ourselves we're just going to establish the horizon line right maybe with a little darker one we can always go back and darken that up later you can even dip your brush right into the watercolor and go ahead and make it nice and dark right there then i'm going to go back to my gray get lots of water on my brush and this is why this brush is just so fast and easy, just like that. So we're just kind of striking up and striking down, just kind of randomly. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pushing up and down as I move back and forth. And that gives me those really nice uneven things. Look at how fast that was, right? Um, and then I can just use some water. And I've already got my background and my foreground in. Look at that. So now it's gonna be doing some lovely granulation. If you want to use salt, this is, you know, when it, not while it's drippy like this. Do you see how drippy it is? So take your towel and let it drip right off the page. Then just dry that top tone off and you've got this nice mod, modeled kind of effect. If you want to uh, dry it down just a bit, you can if you wanna just Make it a little more patchy like that so you have some odds and ends kind of going through it. That's wonderful too. But look at that, just like that. So this is what I was going for and this is how I started. You see this beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful color in here that's coming already. So I am gonna grab some of the uh, color in full speed here, right on my Mottler brush because I see that it has a fade on it, right? 
And now we're gonna rub it in the palette just a bit, just like that. And I'm going to let some of these areas be a little darker. Now, this is a step I'm doing because I already noticed the dry shift. So depending on what color you're doing yours in, you have to be aware there is a dry shift. And if you feel that the dry shift is just, you know, drying up too much, then you might want to go through and just kind of, you know, do this because for me, I like a little more color and I like it to fade in the background, but I want the drama, you know, and you notice I'm leaving some white space there. See the white space? Yes. Let me let this, there we go. So I'm leaving the white space and as I add water, so I'm dipping my brush into the water and I'm going to do this. I'm going to put, we're going to have a little fun with it. I'm going to put my towel down and I'm literally going to do this. And the reason why I'm doing it is because this is a beautiful granulating color. And in order for some of the color in this to shine, we want it to have a lot of water within this beautiful watercolor paper. And you can already see those tones coming, right? And if I want it more washy, then simply just dab a little more water and let it go. Now, when you get those beads up there, you don't necessarily want them. So just tap them out with a t clean towel. And now we've got this really interesting looking background and we have the bottom already done. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so now we're going to start on our tree. So the first way that I think easy peasy to do this tree is let me get my Mottler brush out of the water. It doesn't need to be there anymore. So clean that off and we'll dry that and let that go and have fun. Okay, um, you can take anything with a flat edge and I think it's the easiest way to do this because I feel like every time you don't do it this way, what happens is you get maybe an uneven line. Um, so I think it's really worthwhile just dipping this right in the watercolor. So my palette is super, super wet. So I dipped it right in there. And I'm just gonna start on my horizon line and reestablish that horizon line. While this is damp, it's not soaking wet. As you can see, it's just damp. So have the color on here and I'm just gonna give it just a few more little, little edges, just like that. Just tapping, kind of rubbing up a little bit, rubbing down just a little bit. And I'm slightly scratching the paper. You, know, you can do this with a card. You can cut plastic and literally scrape at it with the plastic. But I find that some of these tools are way more effective in getting these linear marks uh, than anything else. Otherwise, it's up to your hand and your poor brush. And a lot of brushes just really don't do that well. So it just depends. And if your paper's buckling, it's really hard to get it like that, right? So now I'm gonna take the watercolor and we're gonna establish trees. So my first tree, I'm just gonna go ahead and just put it right in there. See, I dug it right into the paper and I can go a little bit heavier and dig it right into the paper. Just go ahead and dig, because it, it can blow out. So because this is still damp, it's actually blowing out. Do you see that, how it's doing that? Then um, I'm gonna establish some other ones in the background. So the ones in the background, they don't have to be dark they just have to be engraved in the dampness of the uh, watercolor. And the reason why is because you want them to sit back, right? You don't necessarily need them to take center front because we're gonna have one tree that sits in the front. So now that we have this, we're looking at this, what are we doing? Well, in the sample that I was given, there was a tree shadow in the background. So we're gonna take a brush like this, that's a fan brush, 
And while the brush is dry, this is a hog fan brush, I'm just gonna dip it in my watercolor. And we just need to know how dark it is. Okay, so the dry shift is okay. I'm gonna look and see if the dry shift is good like that. Then I'm gonna just tap a tree right down the center. And all I'm going for here is a shadow of a tree and I'm gonna let it explode into the damp watercolor. I'm not trying to get the definition in the tree just yet. We're gonna leave it, let it just do its thing. Okay, so get grabbing a little watercolor and just let it evolve in the damp mix. We don't want it to take center stage. So like even this, if it's looking a little bit too, um, a little too much and you think maybe that's not gonna dry uh, and it's gonna just be too dark, we can just rub it out a little bit. Just spread it, spread it out with just a, a tab of water. And even like some of the water on this particular watercolor, it makes it look better when you add water. It really does. Okay, so let's get in a little closer here. And for the other tree, as this starts to dry, it's going to reach a time where when I tap in the watercolor on the line of the tree, it's not going to spread as much. So when I see that happening, that's when I can tap out. And literally we want like a few taps up here. We want just like maybe one side, we're gonna take the tree and then we're gonna go down on the other side one side and down on the other side and we want a mix of kind of more definition but also some that is not defined okay and that's about what we're looking for now in this area here where it's uh it's still really damp you can see it just dissipates we just don't need to go there so we're going to do the trees that are more in the background and all i'm going to do is slightly wet my brush here and I'm just going to kind of work at these lines a bit. Now I engraved them into this paper. You do not have to engrave yours if you don't want to. I just like a little bit more than just a shadow on the trees and it's going to be all about building stuff up now at this point. So I'm taking a little more color based on what I see here. And while it's damp, we're just gonna add it in, in those little tree shapes. We just want the appearance of a tree because we have one that is gonna go into the foreground. So we just want those lines not to be so apparent. And I'm adding a little water to my brush. And again, this is just a a goat hair kind of brush. It's just a bristly brush. I like it because it gives me that rough texture that I feel, you know, easily makes the trees. I don't have to sit there. It just kind of does it for me. Looking good, right? Isn't that looking good? So now I have to kind of wait for this to dry. So while we're going to wait, we're going to work on this, this little area here. So I'm going to take my watercolor and literally brush it very, very roughly. This is dry brushing with any brush. This is, I like this one because it's a scrape, like a scrape. And I'm literally pulling some of those pieces down with a very, very dry brush just to get that texture. Cool texture, look at that. We're gonna maybe make a little texture more here for balance. Then, um, I actually love the way that looks. I don't even think we need to go any further, but there were some little like areas in that sample that looked like it was striking up. So we could literally just go a couple of times here, but I don't wanna really cover any of the white space. So. I'm just kind of giving it some texture just like that, just to break up that line. But rem remember, I'm trying to keep that horizon line there. Um, and then here's our tree, our faded in the background tree. So this is about the color that I like on the brush that's now. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna just put in the granulation. 
I'm not going to dig this tree into the paper because I don't want it to stand out like the first one. So I'm just kind of tapping the tree shadows. I like a little bit more, um, I don't know, I like a little bit more of a abstract look in my art than the sample. I thought the sample was great, but for me personally, and you can do it differently, I just happen to like a little more abstract. So I am giving enough so that we know that that's a shadowed tree in the back, right? But I'm not gonna try and do like crazy details. It's a shadow of a tree. And also you can decide whether you want your tree limbs to come out slightly and go down or if they're just gonna go straight across. That is what I will leave up to you and your creative energy. Now remember, this is granulating watercolor, so it is going to granulate, and at some point, it is going to want to um, to do this. It's going to want to leave you with kind of a mass tone. So break up the mass tone on the shadowy parts. There. Okay, so I've got my shadow tree. Now we're going to work on the main tree. So using a little water on my brush, let's try that. Okay, good. I've got some mass tone, so I'm going down the tree and I'm just putting in some basic dots just like that. Then I'm going to continue on with this line that I had here. And every so often I'm going to come out on one side only right now just to just so that I'm not distracted. And I'm going to decide how tall this tree needs to be. Now on the sample that I'm looking at over here, um, it actually looks like there's just a really thin, very, very thin trunk with nothing. So remember how I said this is my favorite removal brush? I'm just taking some clean water. Wow, it's magic. And I'm removing a little bit of the watercolor right back to the white. And that's something that you have to know your color. I know this color does that. So look at how I can remove it right back to the white. And then I have to decide. So I'm just taking a clean brush and wiping the really wet area off of the brush with my towel. And then I'm just pulling the watercolor out. Clean brush. So I guess the tree's gonna start there according to this sample. And here I can clean a little bit up, a little bit here, maybe a little here just for effect. So I'm going to carry some of this white space down just to create a little negative space so it doesn't look so dark. And here, just get a little white, a little white there, and a little white there. And see what that does? So it just kind of breaks it up and it's going to give us some more dimension on our on our horizon line. So just taking a little bit out. We can always put more back in. Okay, so getting more watercolor on my brush. Now we're gonna kind of develop out the trees. And I want it to be really kind of sparse and uneven, you know? Now I have a very, very little page here. Um, and this is quite the large brush. So I have to go very carefully and just go very, very little dots. Because if I go too heavy, it's gonna be really apparent that this is a very small piece of paper. And the final effect is kind of gonna look a bit heavy because the paper is so small. 
This is like an, a very, like just little sketchbook. You know what I mean? But see how that is right there? So I left that tree and I did a nice, uh, nice rough tree. Now here, I'm just gonna add a little water to my brush and maybe wash it out just a bit, tap it until I get that right, that right color on my brush and then get the damp off. And I'm just gonna give just a few little leaves here, not a lot because, or just a few little branches, just so that we go, you know, to, to take advantage of the fact that I carved that in. And you might not even like the look of the carving. You don't have to carve it in. You could carve in maybe just one or not at all. You know what I mean? If you're good and you just don't want that linear line, I happen to really like it. It's just something, you know, that um, that looks interesting to me. In fact, I have news for you. I'm actually gonna carve a little bit more because in this piece, I really like the linear lines and I think that it would benefit from just a few more. So I'm gonna wet my card, put it in a little bit of the watercolor, and I'm actually going to just draw in some lines here in water. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna split apart some of our watercolor. Oh, there's my dogs. And what I'm doing this for is because I really love this linear look, right? I love this way it looks. This is just the artist's side, right? This is where you're going to make those little decisions all on your own, you know? Um, you can even take the card and literally scratch some whites back into your paper. See, I, I like that look. I like the scrapes. I think they look really good. Okay. So now as this dried down, it I think it looks fabulous. I actually don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it. So I've got my shadow. So let's take a look at the sample here. Now, of course, right, I'm an artist. I'm hoping I didn't copy it too much, but this is what was the original one. And here is my version of it. So now the decisions that you can make in this are things like how tall is your tree gonna be? How much linear space is going to be in the background? How much white space is gonna be left? Are you going to do anything down here that's special? You know what I mean? How are you going to translate this on your paper? I'm gonna take my little angular shader brush here and, and just kind of go into my color and just kind of finish it off with just a little more color. And I'll show you what I'm doing when I get you closer. So right there, um, I just really want there to be not just one big line. So I'm just kind of adding by tapping in a little bit of the watercolor. See that? I'm bringing it down. And what that does is it's now kind of looking more like um, a shadow line. Because I want it to look kind of natural. I, like maybe this is on a lake, you know? Like I kind of have a tree almost here, or maybe a tree there. So these are just little fiddles, little final touches that you can do uh, just to keep it. So what I'm basically doing is I want the horizon line in but to me, looking at this piece right now, and I haven't had a chance to really study it or stand back. I'm just kind of going with the flow right now. What it looks like to me is it just needs a little bit of, um, you know, breaking on the horizon line. Because I don't want it just to be one, one just basic line. I actually want a little more energy charged up there and a little more highs and lows in my temperature 
you know, so like dark shadows going through here. Can you see? You see now how it's farther. See now how that's going? I think I need to zoom out just a bit. Okay. See what I mean? So if I were to leave this here, um, I like some of the white peeking through like there. Like I literally, this bottom here, I could just throw some water on it and let it just break apart and give us some of those beautiful, beautiful, um, what is it? It's like a rose tone in this watercolor. So if you add a lot of water to this color, it literally is going to give you more rosy kind of undertones, which you saw in the project that I did for the class. This is why it's really fun to swatch colors and play with them because you can see I'm literally using just one paint here and because I know it's got these rose, these rosy undertones, it looks like there was a rose painted in there first and then gray painted on top of it or maybe like a neutral tint or something, you know? Okay, so now we would let this dry and voila. If we need to fiddle with it at all, like if this dries back, like it looks kind of right now, like this area is damp and so it wants to split the watercolor apart. So what I would do is leave it dry and then see what I'm with and then like hold it away and say, do I want that there? Do I not want that there? And as an artist, just review your work and fiddle a little bit with it and decide what you want on there. Now go enter the giveaway, do your version, stand back after it's dry, take a look at it, see if this is what you like, you wanna try it again. If you came out with something great, if you came out with something not so good, share it anyway. We are not going to judge you on my group page. We are all here to learn, and I honestly think that the bad stuff even gets even more comments than the really, really good stuff because people want to be encouraging and you know what you don't want to scare everybody off if everything is too good all the time then nobody will post so we want the good and the bad and the ugly and the what do i do next questions in the group page all right guys i hope you enjoyed this coming up next i'm going to be reviewing all kinds of stuff so keep an eye out for the channel and i really hope you come and take my granulating class at jacklinjacks.com have a great one